Welcome to Cozy Noah Vibes, where we listen, relax, and get sleepy. As always, I'm your host, Noah, and I'm so grateful to have you here tonight. Elizabeth will be guiding you through the cobblestone streets and tree-lined squares of the historic city center of Bordeaux in southern France. This is the first installment in a two-part tour through this ancient and beautiful city. The tour will continue in our next episode on Wednesday night this week, but both are able to stand alone too. So don't feel like you need to stay awake and hear this one in full to enjoy the next. You can always pick up where you left off tomorrow night. So let's enjoy a moment now to ease into the peace and comfort of bed. I want you to know that whatever you're feeling right now, you are not alone. Of course, I sincerely hope that you're feeling content, at ease, and restful. But if you're not, that's okay. Just remember that this time right here is for you to be true and authentic to yourself. Allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself to reflect if it feels right to do so. And as you go through that process, also allow yourself to release. Release anything that is uncomfortable, letting a gradual lightness envelop your body and mind. We all try our best to be strong and to project our best selves to the world around us. But it's also important to let our guard down once in a while, to acknowledge anything that might be weighing on us, and to release any tension it could be causing us to hold. Now is 100 your time to feel at ease with exactly who you are and how you're feeling. And I want you to know that you can rest and recharge, comfortable in the knowledge that you are not alone. So now, as you let go of tension and discomfort, just let your eyes fall closed. Picture yourself relaxing in a comfortable seat of a gently gliding tram. You're gazing out the window towards people milling along the picturesque river front of one of the loveliest cities you've had the good fortune to visit. This is where our story begins. It's a gorgeous day in the city of Bordeaux in southwestern France. You're sitting in a padded seat, riding comfortably on a sleek, Modern tram. The tram is gliding alongside a river that sparkles in the sun. You know that many of your fellow riders are headed to work or school. You're on your way to something different, a voyage of discovery sorts. You're headed to take a sightseeing tour through the oldest portion of this historic riverport town. Curiosity. You allow your gaze to sweep across the vibrant scene outside the window next to you. Your eyes roam over the people strolling a white path on the riverbank on your left. Then you turn to contemplate the elegant old city buildings to your right. As you watch, the tram pulls smoothly to a stop. You stand up and move towards the exit. The doors open and you step off onto the pavement. As you do so, feel that you're turning away from the present and towards the past. Specifically, you're turning towards the gate to the old city center and its remnants of the Middle Ages. You're looking towards the break-taking buildings that line the riverfront. A bit farther back looms a building that reminds you of an unusually narrow fairy tale castle. A solid looking stone edifice rises up, topped by several round spires. 
Something like a belt or soars above the skyline. A building like this might not be the first thing that comes to mind when modern visitors think of the word gate, but this beautiful structure is in fact a medieval gate house. In the middle of the building is an opening wide enough for a car to pass through. If that were allowed or a chariot, people are only allowed to unfoot these days. This is poor Kale Howe. Its old gate house was once set into the heavy walls that ringed the city in the Middle Ages. The walls are long gone, taken down centuries ago to open up the town. But the gate house remains. Behind you, another tram stops and discharges a handful of passengers, then slides off along the tracks. You turn to watch it go. The grand buildings behind you are reflected in its curved streamlined windows for a moment before blurring as the tram picks up speed, feeling like you're walking into a bygone era. You move away from the streetcar stop and towards the castle-like gate, ready to walk through. This old riverfront city has been continually inhabited since at least the Stone Age. It's located deep in what's now the southwest of France, but it wasn't always part of that country. In the time of ancient Rome, the Romans controlled the town and it served as a commercial outpost of the Roman Empire. In those times, it was known as Bird Eye Gala. Later, in the Middle Ages, the setting was part of an independent region ruled by dukes and duchesses. In the 12th century, a young duchess named Eleanor of Aquitaine inherited the region. Eleanor married the French king, and her lands briefly became part of France. After fifteen years, though though, the royal couple split. Eleanor promptly got remarried, this time to the heir to the English throne. This made Bordeaux a possession of the King of England, and so it remained for three centuries before finally becoming French once and for all in the late Middle Ages. This history is on your mind as you step into the momentary shadow of the passage through the Gata House. Here, in its great archway, it seems like you can almost feel the past around you. The walls block out the sun. The old stone seems to seep coolness from its depths, as impenetrable to the sun's rays as it once was to enemy weapons. And then the moment passes. You step once more out into the bright sun, this time on the medieval side of the gate. It is here that you are to meet your guide. All you know about him is his name, Jim Mark. You look around, blinking slightly even though you were only in the archway for a moment. You spot a man of indeterminate age holding a sign with a name handwritten on it in careful letters. You move towards him, and he greets you warmly. Welcome to the Middle Ages, he says with a hint of a smile and you are struck by the harmony of his greeting with your thoughts in this moment. Jean Marx weeps his arm upwards to indicate the port kale, how beside you and begins to tell the tale of his city. He has learned that the Gata House dates to the 1490s. It was built to celebrate a military victory in Italy by the French king soon after Bordeaux had finally come under control of the French monarchy. As Jean Marc weaves the tale, you warm to his enthusiasm for this land and its history. 
You find yourself listening as much to the tone and cadence of the story as to its details. Swept away in the grand narrative, kings and queens, battles and victories, the rise and fall of different factions and powers, through it all remained the city itself, sometimes altered, sometimes damaged, but always left standing after the rest fell from power or passed from grace. Jean Mark asks then if you'd like to go up inside the Gata house, and you agree. He shows you to a little entrance within the Archont motions for you to enter, telling you it's best enjoyed on your own. You accept his advice and mount the staircase by yourself. They take you up to the first floor of the building where you enter a small museum. Apart from the attendant at the counter who greets you in the slightly hushed tones of a librarian or perhaps a nun, you're the only one here. Your footsteps echo slightly as you walk across the floor to view the few exhibits. You learn about the regional stone quarries and stone working that gave rise to the city's buildings over the centuries. And you view a short film that brings to life the epic medieval battles that Jean Mark described for you with such feeling. Then, turning, you make your way to another set of stairs, which will lead you to the top of the tower. You climb slowly, a bit in awe being within these ancient walls. A reverence made sharper and more poignant by your near solitude in this fortress. And you realize that your guide knew what he was doing when he encouraged you to explore this monument by yourself. You trail your fingers along the wall beside you savoring its faintly dusty feeling. As you brush your fingertips on this ancient wall, you feel like you're snatching a fleeting touch of a long-lost past. At the same time, the stone feels so very solidly real that you catch your breath. A great sense of connection to the grand swath of human history floods into you. And you breathe in deeply the mildly musty scent of the tower around you. You close your eyes and breathe out again slowly. Images of the ages swirling through your mind. And then you begin to climb again. Another set of stairs. And you've reached the top. A largely bare garret. A simple and unfurnished room beneath the roof. Here, you can gaze out at the city and the river below. You look out the window at the waters of the river flowing along, flowing just as they flowed hundreds of years ago when this Gata house was first built. You wonder what life was like for the guards who once looked upon this same view from this same space so long ago. Below you, and slightly off to the side, Bordeaux's oldest and most famous bridge spans the waters, called the Pont de Air, or the Stone Bridge. It was built under the Emperor Napoleon. Up until then, people who wanted to get to the other side of the river had to cross by boat. It's an elegant old stone bridge supported by picturesque arches. It's a far cry from the modern suspension bridge that rises further down the river. On the edge of town, you count the arches, a total of seventeen, the same number of letters as in the emperor's full name. You finish counting and smile, marveling at your good fortune to be standing in this very place, seeing this very view, here and now, slowly, you make your way back down the stairs, 
pausing again to savor the musty scent of the old tower, and then you step back into the sunshine and rejoin Jean Mark. He waits a moment as if to give you time to fully return to the present. He continues to share more information about the history, and you listen not so much to the names of the kings but more to the way that Jean Mark tells the story. Let's end our journey here for tonight and look forward to our next exploration of the beauty and history of Bordeaux. Sweet dreams and good night.